Business Workshop. And uh, I don't know how much I should say about myself. I've given a little brief description on the, on the web page. I have actually had a latent interest in dialogue for many years. And about 10 years ago, I did a research workshop with a uh, university in, in Germany, where we uh, met over a period of uh, five years, three times a year over a long weekend, to explore what different methods of dialogue are out there to actually look how can we sort of structure a conversation. Uh, since then, I've been conducting dialogue workshops as, as a you know, facilitator. I'm involved with Nederland in Dialogue. I participate in Utrecht in, in Dialogue. And I have an ongoing group which is German speaking, and there's some Swiss, Austrian, and German people, and I'm the only so called Dutch. They always call me the Flying Dutchman. Um, so that's something which I enjoy because I really feel when I look at how we communicate with each other in our day and age, that's where I frequently see a breakdown. And we talk about sustainability, about all kinds of things. Um, I feel if we can't have a sustainable manner of talking with each other, how can we sort of talk about all these other aims and objectives which we have? And that was partially also in this description, and that's what motivates me to do this. So, the mystery of innovation. Now, I don't know what attracted you there, whether it did attract you at all, but I just want to make sure that I talk about the mystery of innovation as, like in the sense of the mystery of French cooking. I'm not going into any religious aspects of it. We may sort of discover that there may be some spiritual under overtones to it. If that happens, that's fine, but it also depends on us and how much we are willing to invest with each other in there because I can't make it happen. I think it's something which we need to create ourselves. That's what I feel. I mean, it's the main thing. We do this together. So. For me, it is important that we get an experience of the group. There will be people who have experience in dialogue or conversation, communication skills. Some have more, some have less. The same with innovation. Some people have maybe more experience with innovation, others have less. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't matter because everybody's contribution may be critical. And that is something which we hopefully can find out together that it isn't just somebody needs to be in control and know everything because a good friend of mine she does. N she knows nothing about cars, and she had a problem with her cars. Went to the garage over and over again, and then one day she was standing underneath the car when they had it up, and said, "What's this thing there?" And the guy sort of looking at her, that really shouldn't be there. Right? It was for her it was a stupid question as a novice, and that actually led to the solving of her car problem. So it's basically one of those rules: there is no stupid question. Okay. As I said, we work together in a collective manner. Um, one of my favorite sayings about dialogue, you may have heard it, is by William Isaacs, who said, dialogue is a conversation with a center, not sides. And that's how I want to look at that as well. At the same time, we need to create a container, and that is what I see more as my responsibility here, a container or a structure or form in which the dialogue can happen. And I like to compare that to something I invite you over to my house for a party to cook a meal together. And I say, okay, I've got a great kitchen, got pots and pans, utensils, everything there, fridge works, stove works, everything else. But you guys need to bring all the ingredients, the food and the wine, that's up to you. And then we plan what we're going to cook. All right? I don't know what everybody's going to bring. All right? I don't know what you may put into the, into the kitchen here. But I hold myself responsibility mainly for holding this together. And the rest we actually do together ourselves based on what you bring in. So your responsibility is to actually speak openly and ask questions, share your experiences. As a good meal starts with good ingredients, I always feel that a dialogue starts with a good question. And I also believe when it comes to innovation, if we ask good questions, I think we become better innovators. Okay. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Then I just want to see, in order to also deal with the time issue, are there any people in the room who actually came here with a existing questions because they've got a situation at work or in general where they say, okay, I really have this question and that is why I want to participate in this workshop, something which they are also happy sharing with you. Yes. Yes? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, two, three. Do I see a three? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so three. Yeah. 
Four? More, more or less. Okay. If it is okay with anybody, and just doing that to save time, I would then already take you four and put you in one group and call you A, and the other four will be the B group. So do we know who the four are? One, two, three, four, you're A. One, two, three, four, you're B. Okay? I know this is fast, making that decision, but that saves a lot of time, which we can use for, for other things. And when we do this again, then other people have a chance. But I really like to work with what is actually alive in people rather than come with theoretical issues. So we have already the uh, groups of A and B. So uh, if we just have the A people stand up and then the B people can have a look around and the B people just choose a person, preferably somebody who you don't know, in order to work with. And then A is the talker and B is the listener. You just break up and you can find any sort of corner here. And for one minute again, I would like A to actually think about what he's going to share, i.e. what is my motivation uh, for being here? What are my expectations of this workshop? What do I want to go home with, right? What is your question which you have, have brought along? B listens to that and you've got two minutes for, for B to listen. A thinks for about it for a minute and then you share for two minutes. It doesn't mean that A has to talk for two minutes and B doesn't have a chance to ask questions because there may be questions of clarification. But hopefully within two <coughs> minutes you are through. Maybe A just shares for one minute or a minute and a half. Then there's a few questions of clarification, if at all, and you may be just done within the, those two minutes. But you've got three minutes total. It literally will be, it may take you longer to go out there than to come back again. But the important thing here is again, to actually sit down beforehand and take your minute, right? I mean, if you rush in there, then lots of things may come to the surface, which we clarify later. If you actually take the time to really get clear on what it is, then it will save time later because the more concise we can actually define what we are doing or what your question is, the better we we'll, we'll can understand. And so the person you're, you're talking to will already have a chance to clarify it for you, so she's already acted as a filter for the group. And then we get back in here, and then B will share what A has told them what the issues are. And then we write them down and vote on one of the issues which is the most attractive issue for all of us. So if the A people just stand up, and the B people just sort of uh, choose somebody and uh, go find a spot outside and, uh, you know, <laughs> Three and a half minutes, I would like to see you back in here. Okay, unless there's any questions, go. So, I mean, I would say you all got excited because you all took more than three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So let's just gather what is there. And what I would like to do is, I mean, I just need to, to write these things down, just to have sort of some key issues that I can sort of write them down. As I said, if B now talks about A's expectations or A's issue, which we can discuss here, that's fine. So, uh, Jeroen, he told me that in his company, uh, he has managed different innovations. said that, what I would like us to do, if everyone just picks up a pen, and uh, there's eight people here, and I would like you to make very clearly a dot on the subject which you feel most aligned with something which you want to discuss. Walk 
kind of food we got. gone a little. I've said already that a dialogue is a conversation with the center, not sides. There's many different ways of dialogue and uh, as far as I'm concerned they're all good, all the methods are good, but none I think if you just use one particular method they may not fit, whether it's non-violent communication or Socratic inquiry or uh, uh, dialogue cafes, I mean there's all kinds of open world cafe there's all kinds of different approaches, and what I like to do is I'd rather than teach you a method, I want you to be yourself, relax into it, because I think my experience has been, it is far more important to speak as who you are than what you know, what methods you know. Of course, if you know certain methods and you can apply them every now and then, that helps. But fundamentally, you don't need to know much about dialogue. I have a wonderful example for that. I mean, today is the anniversary of Kennedy's death. And uh, when we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, we were actually at the brink of World War III. What actually happened to avert that? It was two people getting together to actually talk, and that was Kennedy and Khrushchev. And again, they didn't have any dialogue specialists, communication specialists, it was just two men sitting together saying, okay, we have an issue here, we have a problem, we need to sort it out. Right? And I think it only worked because of who they were, irrespective of whether you look up to Kennedy and or look up to Khrushchev, it doesn't matter, but who these people were. And that's what I would like you to invite into as well. Be as you are, speak freely, speak openly. If I could introduce one rule, it would be let's slow it down. Yeah, pretty comfortable. This one as well. It's comfortable. <laughs> okay, shortly you will uh, explain something about uh, how to innovate uh, across companies. We are working together with, uh, with IT partners, that was a choice because of cost saving initially, but now we also want to leverage on their experience. So we want to go into a partnership mode where it's not them just doing what we ask them to do, but also uh, they should also uh, bring bring innovations and therefore they should bring something what we not ask them but what's really what we need. And we are not in that uh, way of working together. So uh, the question which I have, which is somehow related to this, is how can we innovate uh, our way of working together that we. How can we make an innovative partnership? What I'd like to do, the question I think is clear. Can you give us some more concrete examples out of your scenario? I mean, because I mean, we can talk about it in an abstract manner. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really help you, but if you can make it as concrete. Listen to yourself basically. Has that been addressed? Which I will have you two talk about that. Yeah. So what is really what you you want to be innovative in? It's not a it's yeah. really a means to an end. Yeah. Let's just evaluate from a higher level what have we observed, how the conversation went, not whether you liked it or didn't, didn't like it, but in how did you sense it in terms of was that productive, what happened there, what was not so productive, I mean, from your perspective, right? I mean, what did you actually feel, I mean, where were we in the flow, where were we actually together on one page, or where were people actually just sort of presenting themselves who were busy with their own issue and it was sort of like superimposed. Well I try to what has been said to translate it into my own idiom 
don't know. Yeah. But I didn't succeed, so then I just keep quiet. That's the most efficient way, I think. I recognize the, the thing you say. I recognize that I had the first part of the conversation also. Um, can I uh, be of added value here or not? And then, uh, well, I just started some questions, and then, then, uh, yeah, I got mm -hmm. more. When I, I thought, uh, at least I thought I understood a bit the situation, so that helped. So I had a very, very different uh, expectation when I started, mm -hmm. but it was absolutely fun. Um, and the the first part was a bit was difficult to get a grip, but that was part of getting the problem uh, clear. So that's that was that can be confusing, I guess. Um, I'm familiar with the problem and the and the, the, the issue and the surrounding, so that is make it more easy. But when you are start asking questions with a different view and 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 not involved, and that can make uh, a problem very clear as well. So I felt a little bit the pressure that I needed to maybe bring in more. So I was very grateful when you two started asking questions. I was sitting inwardly and say yes, yes, because that was where you actually harvest the issue, where you can analyze it. And then there was at one point you and also Jeroen came in with, I mean, you started making some assumptions. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a little bit too early in the process, but and it stopped by itself. I didn't have to intervene then. Mm -hmm. And that is something which I think we can now, could have gone in more, a little bit more, which I just tried with the last round to say if there's still something which we can give you sort of as a, okay, take this or take that. But again, of course, it's a very complex issue. But I'd rather work with something which is real than me creating a case, a scenario case, and say, okay, this is the scenario, and I want you to deal with that. And then everybody makes assumptions about something else. And before we know it, we talk about some kind of castles in the cloud, and you go back from here and you can't really get your foot on the ground, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, if I have achieved at least a little bit that you feel, okay, there is something in a different way of working together, communicating with each other, or, I mean, and this may be just me personally, I mean, I cannot change what life, if the, if the train doesn't show up, if, the, if I sit in the field, I mean, I've lived in Holland now 10 years, I've learned a lot. You better relax. Checking your watch 15 times, I mean, five minutes from home or ten minutes from home doesn't make you go faster. That's just me personally, right? So let it go, right? I can't control that. What I can control is the process here, and I'd rather focus on that. So again, I want to thank you for being here. And who knows, we may meet each other again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>